Brian, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining you us. Bet. Great to be here. You know, yesterday I went on the taxfoundation.org website and it went through Hillary Clinton's seven brackets, actually eight brackets when you, uh, when you, when you look at the highest earners and that extra uh, 5% on, uh, on the $5 million uh, incomes. But it looks like even if you're making, here, here are the brackets. So if you're making something like $90,000, you're talking about a tax rate on, a fe on the federal level of 28%. Yeah. So add on state, that takes you to 38%. Add on the 7% New York City, as, or, uh, City and then Obamacare. You're talking about almost 50% of your income if you make $100,000. Yeah, the tax increase here is bigger than most people think about because they're failing to add on the state and local taxes. But it, it has to be big because she's talking about a lot of new spending, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's education. You're talking about $1.3 trillion over 10 years. And so the, the money has to come from somewhere. She's trying to concentrate it on the upper income echelons right now. The question is, can she continue to do that with all these spending Yeah, but plans? Harlan, she's talking about the ultra-rich, but the truth is when you go go through each of the brackets, everybody gets hit here. Absolutely. I mean, what does this do to the economy? I mean, I, to me, this seems like the worst possible time to raise taxes on anybody. We just, you know, in the first half of the year, we grew at 1%. Yeah. You know, this is the worst re recovery in 67 years or something like that. What, what, what does this do to the economy? Well, that, I mean, that's a real question. We, growth is the only thing that gets us out of this economy, right? That, that, that is the problem for jobs, for wages. We need more economic growth. The big knock on Clinton's plan again and again has been it's not a pro-growth plan. It's a redistributionist plan. We're going to tax the wealthy. We've got a whole bevy of programs, by the way, which don't seem to have a lot of coherence, and that's why she's having a hard time getting traction with voters. There's no really big picture here. The idea of working for everybody doesn't really make sense to the average voter. They want to see growth. They want to see income gains. She hasn't been able to demonstrate that. What do you think, Jack? Does this, does this promote economic growth? No. I mean, in a word, no. But what I'm interested to see is how do these brackets compare to current brackets? I know at the very top, she's adding new brackets. Right now, the top bracket is $382,000, $385,000. I, I think it does make sense to, sit, to, to question whether you want to stop there. I mean, let's say we wanted a revenue neutral plan that would not raise taxes at all. If I were king, I would tweak the brackets so that the highest bracket was above the current level. It just seems odd to concentrate all the brackets in there. Mm. Um, but right, you mentioned the 28% level on $91,000 of income. Right now, what bracket does the $91,000 earner fall into? I'm not sure. Mm, which yeah. I knew. So, you're, so you're saying for a big group of people, it might not be a major tax increase because that's where they are right now. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I, I don't want to say that because I'm, I wish I was sure and I'm not, right. but I'm, I'm just not sure. It well, she's, she's promising to raise the minimum wage as well, Morgan, to $15 an hour nationally with expanded overtime rules, an increase in mandated benefits, including a guaranteed 12 weeks with pay for new mothers and fathers, and a tax credit to incentivize businesses that share profits with employees. Do these costs to small businesses outweigh any tax credit. I think you hit the nail on the head, Maria, when you said small business. When I was listening to Mrs. Clinton give this speech yesterday, that's the first thing that I thought about. My father's a small business owner. You can go to any small business owner in America today, Brian, and I think that, you, that, that will say between the Obamacare regulations, uh, between all of the new regulations, I mean, as, as Trump said yesterday when he was speaking to the contractors, it's like 25% of the cost of building a new home is in regulations. So I think when you look at all of this, I, I don't know how small business owners are going to be able to afford Fifteen dollars an hour. I mean, it makes yeah. no sense to me. The tax credit is such a fig leaf here. They are dealing with so many regulations, so many new regulations, all of these different mandates. You know, to, to offer a tax credit for sharing profits, it's nothing. And we've seen new business formation rates in the U.S. just drop to very, very low levels, very disturbing levels, because that's really the engine of growth. If we don't have that, forget about higher wages, forget about job growth. You're not going to have it. One of the little understood things is that while the effective tax rate is actually for on business is not 35%, it's about 18%. But what that misses is it's the small businessman who pays that 35. Mm -hmm. It's the big corporations that are paying low, sing low double digits, even single digits. So if you brought down the rate dramatically, but got rid of a lot of the loopholes, then the small businessman would be paying whatever, the, whatever you settle on, 25, 20%, but mm -hmm. 
but so would GE, and, and it would make a lot more yeah. sense. And the truth is, is when you look at the amount of money that actually goes to Treasury, the, the business tax revenue is a very small component of that. And it's so tricky. this is an area that you actually could cut way down mm -hmm. and not impact the deficit uh, because it's not, it, it's not uh, material relative to other tax revenue. And that was my other problem with the plan with yesterday, Maria and Brian, is there was no real discussion of the $19 trillion debt. So we're talking about a $35 billion college affordability plan, new infrastructure spending, and we already know that mandatory spending on Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare is out of control. It's literally an national emergency. Yeah, let's talk about that because Clinton is proposing a plan that would make public colleges free for all. It would establish a moratorium on student loan repayment for most students, a plan that analysts say could cost $35 billion a year, as you say, Morgan. This plan requires states to spend money as well. Is that realistic or, or not? Yeah, well, look, states are feeling the pinch as well, but the problem here is we're not actually talking about containing costs for college. We're not talking about increasing quality. There's no discussion of that. This is simply a quantity matter. We want to push more people through the education system. We're just shifting the cost on the taxpayers. It's also interesting that she talked about that in the speech and then later talked about apprenticeship and said, hey, not everybody should be going to college. We should be in these apprenticeship roles. But these two policies work against each other. If you're going to subsidize college education to that tune, you're going to be pushing people into college education. That skyrockets costs for everybody. So there's a real sort of internal inconsistency here in what she's talking about. And, and we know, end. Harlan, one of the reasons that we're talking about free college is because Bernie Sanders pushed Hillary Clinton all the way to the left, right. forcing her to offer something like this. Absolutely. And, and you actually just set off a light bulb in my head, which is that this isn't about containing costs. And that reminds me of Obamacare, because Obamacare was never about containing costs or about outcomes or about health care. It was about getting as many people enrolled as possible. That sounds like, like exactly what they're trying to do with college. And it doesn't solve any long-term problem. In fact, it probably exacerbates them. No, that's right. I mean, there's, there's no point in pushing people through college. If, as Hillary Clinton said, there's lots of other means for people to get the skill training they Absolutely. need to be productive. You don't want to be doing this. And it's expensive. $35 billion a year, a year, you know, that's just, that's big money on top of the infrastructure plans. And we've got the debt looming over us. We've got to rethink priorities on these yeah, things. She was, I think she was just throwing a bone to the millennial voters there and to the Bernie voters. And it's, it's just, there's nothing realistic about the plan. And it's a very crass political move, in my opinion. It doesn't sound like something that's actually going to happen. It sounds like, as you say, a bone to the Bernie voters, and then that one. And then you think it just goes. The, so she doesn't side. follow through. You, you think that would have to be my suspicion so because the, the cost containment is, is a key point. That's why college tuitions keep on going up because they can. So one of the big crux, really the crux of her plan is that she's proposing what her campaign is calling the largest infrastructure investment since World War II. We saw the problems rolling out the infrastructure portion of Obama's stimulus, those so-called shovel-ready jobs. That was just a fraction of this investment. What effect does this have on job creation at the ground level? We Brian? have seen this story before and voters have seen this story before. Eight years ago with the stimulus in the United States, but we've seen it play out in Japan. We've seen it play out in China. Infrastructure is part of facilitating economic growth, but it is not the source of economic growth. You need entrepreneurs moving products and services and ideas across the broadband, across the roads. Building bridges and roads isn't going to get you there. I think the numbers that we're seeing in terms of job creation here are inflated. Um, we've, again, we've just seen this story play out before, and it hasn't been a good result. All right, we'll leave it there. Brian, good to see you. Thanks so much for walking through it here. with us. Brian Brenberg, 